Hey, Mary. Hi, Hilary. We're here at the end of the quest trek. Yes, yes. And there's a little piece that uh, we talked about wanting to pass on. Yep. So we decided to do it this way. Yeah, right? nicer. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about the coactive model of coaching or how you suggest we proceed. Yeah, yeah. We spoke quite a lot already about the, the one of the cornerstones. The model has four cornerstones. And um, I think one of the most important for me uh, to really get in my body is that people are naturally creative, resourceful and whole. Say that again. People are naturally resourceful, creative and whole. Okay. Mensen zijn van nature heel vindingrijk en creatief. And this means that, especially for us being yoga teachers, we really want to help people, that we should give people space to solve their own problems. Um, so as a coach, and I think as a yoga teacher as well, you are not there to save the problems of people. You are there to inspire them, to help them, to look at it maybe from another perspective. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to do it for them. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things I wanted to, to, to give you guys. Mm -hmm. that, um, give people the space to figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. But just help them. Give them signs of directions. Mm -hmm. Work together on that. Mm -hmm. And another one is, um, uh, you will see it, uh, you made a picture of it. So I'll show you what yeah. it is. I'll put the picture on the Facebook. Yeah. yeah. So the other one, it's in the right hand corner. It's saying dance in this moment. Right. Okay. Which is... Um, it's a very nice uh, cornerstone for teaching yoga, for being a coach, because it really says like connect to the present moment. Mm. Don't think in advance already like the right question. What is the right question I should ask? Because if I'm thinking about that, I'm not together with you anymore. And it's also a process of learning that you really learn to trust that the right question will pop up. Mm. And um, dance in this moment also means that you really connect to what happens outside. So sometimes a bell might ring, something might happen, and you can incorporate it, you can really dance. It's really about dancing in a way. Mm -hmm. Dancing together, it's also about being together. Mm -hmm. So in a way, sometimes it's not even clear who is following and who is leading in a, in a real coaching conversation. And I think in the yoga practice, sometimes it, it's also like that. Mm -hmm. It's more of a flow and... Um, uh, yeah, so the, the biggest thing is don't try to be perfect and, and be in your head and ask the right question. And sometimes you can even ask as a coach, if you're working together in groups, like, which question should I ask you now? Because yeah. I'm stuck. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be the one who has the yeah. answers. Sometimes we know what we need. Yeah, yeah, and for me, this was also one of the biggest uh, uh, befriding, uh, liberations or something. Yeah. That because I always had the feeling that I had to act smart and had yeah. to to have the right question or the right advice. And in this kind of coaching, you don't give advice even because you really feel that a person is naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. That this person knows the best what's good for him. Maybe he cannot reach but that it. Can, I can imagine. I mean, giving that advice piece. That's for a helper. Yeah, it's quite hard. It's it's almost like you have to you have to. So your mouth shut sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's you know what I mean? For sure. Sometimes <laughs> you just have to, and you can even ask what kind of advice would you give yourself if you yeah, want yeah. to do something. But yeah, get out of the habit of telling people what to do in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, there's one other one, which is focusing on the whole person, which is mm -hmm. on, the, on the right button. Mm -hmm. And that's also a, a, quite an important one to embody. Like, don't try to fix things. If I have a problem and I come to you, you could really go to analyze my problem together with me. But I did that myself many times already. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you have this experience that sometimes if you really dive into it, it really makes you feel so empty that you don't have energy. You're just mm -hmm. getting even more stuck. And focus on the whole person means that you really see who this person is. He's mm -hmm. much more than the problem or the illness. Yeah. He is. And in yoga, that also comes in the pose they should present. Of course. Like they're getting it, they're not getting it. They're yeah. doing it right and not yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's really to broaden your perspective. And but I now, think... Hold on. I just, uh, wait, let me just pause you. Because I just focused on teaching yoga. But we're actually also talking about more like coaching each other. Yeah. Right? In this group. Yeah. I mean, these skills are transferable, I assume, in all these situations yeah. to some degree. Even in your private life. Even in your private life, right. Even in your private life. But we're, we're really wanting them to practice or try to practice, try to when we have them working in their 
groups, they're small groups, yeah. and listening and coaching each other yeah. and supporting each other. This is where they can practice. And I think things. especially then this one, eh, focus on the whole whole person because someone might come to you. He has an assignment for a project to do yeah. for you for uh, for the teacher training, and he gets so stuck. Yeah. And then you can really focus on where he is stuck and how he became stuck, and he will he won't be able to move forward. Mm. So focus on the whole person means like going into the potential of this person. What mm. are his core values? What is he longing for? Yeah. How does the world look like? Mm. What are other perspectives to look mm -hmm. at it? Mm -hmm. So it's so playful way of, of working together. And then mm. if you broaden the, the perspectives, if you really use, if you can use spirit energy, you can use emotional intelligence, yeah. physical intelligence, then the problem will transform. It won't be a problem anymore. After coaching a, yeah. a while, a person would look completely different at the same situation. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a kind of a magic trick right. around problem right. also. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the others? The other one is um, evoke transformation. Mm -hmm. And that really has to do with um, uh, if you have a coaching, uh, coaching conversation, also come into an action. Don't mm. only speak about it. Really. Mm. And an action can be also that you give someone an inquiry that he has to sit on a question for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be an action action in the real world, but make sure that you, you bring it a step forward. Mm -hmm. That is, right. It's not just a, ri a nice chat. Right. And I think that is, that is one of, yeah, that, that's the most important things. And then there is um, a few things, a few skills that they say should always be there. Mm -hmm. um, curiosity. Mm -hmm. Be curious. Be mm -hmm. as curious as a child. There are no stupid questions in coaching. Right, right. The most stupid questions are often the best. Right. Simple, basic. Simple. Yeah. yeah simple. Short questions. Yeah. Yeah. You saw some things going on this weekend, and you yeah. had an advice. Yeah. I heard yeah. That you didn't I had advice. Yeah. Eh? You had some. Well, you had some yeah. suggestions. Some, some suggestions. Some, some observation. Advice. Let's yeah. put it that yeah. way. Yeah. 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 What it did you see? Just ask short questions. Don't go feeling in maybe you feel like this and this and man and man and man and man the person doesn't even know which question you ask anymore right so ask what do you feel how are you right what else is there and i heard some you know and it's so tempting to ask to tell the story more tell me more tell me what happened why oh, it happened yeah more. very interesting yeah for coaching it's not the, the story is not so interesting in right. a way right. it's not about if people start to end up really in their story you have a very nice coaching skill which is called intruding which means that you can be really rude. You can even say like, okay, please, bottom line, what is the essence of what you're telling me? Yeah. You don't need to know the whole story. Right. And you don't ask so many why questions. Yeah. So. What? what how? What? How? How does it feel? What? And just look also in the, in the co-active book. They yeah. also have some examples, but it's really the short questions. Mm -hmm. And then leave a pause because yes. sometimes we are afraid of the pauses. Then you think, oh, I didn't. Uh, then their self-management comes in place. Right, right. Down I've here on the left the, corner. Yeah, I right. asked the question and it stays really silent. And I think, oh shit, he or she didn't get my question. I should reframe it. Your and voices are coming up. That's the voice that we worked on. Yeah, yes. You just shut your mouth, be silent, yes. and give the other the space. Give the person the space to think. And if the question isn't clear, he would say, I don't understand your question. Yeah, right. So trust that process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's about, yeah, intuition is nice. Mm -hmm. Use your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And there is one skill that you can use in the coactive coaching is also your intuition says something about what people don't say, but what you feel is, is mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. is true. Yeah. Your intuition is always right in a way, but what it says, how you translate it, might not be the way the person means it. Right. So you can always say like, my intuition or my gut feeling says that there's a lot of sadness that you carry with you. And then you say, is that true? Yeah. Or is it something else? So don't stick to your interpretation. Right. So, right. Uh, Good. And let, let it be a nice dance together. <laughs> so just a last, um, I don't know if you want to go to this level right now, but we're going to be asking them to do some coaching coaching check-in sessions over either phone or Skype yeah in group yeah. we said three but we might make it four yeah and what's the person that's not in the coat you know there's the person in that moment you say okay you have 15 minutes on so and so and so there's a coach and then there's either one or two observers yeah 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 the role of the observer is a very nice role you can really 
feel where conversation goes. So the idea of the observant is to give back to the coach what he did really well. Mm -hmm. Where did he use his intuition? Where was he really curious? Where, where could you feel that he used the, the different cornerstones like people are naturally resourceful, creative mm -hmm. and whole right. and, 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 uh, or a focus on the whole person? And where, what, could, what could he learn more? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not about what people didn't do well. Look for what went really well, and and look also for the edges where a person can still grow. Mm -hmm. So that's what you give back. And normally you have like a uh, a coaching session for 15 minutes. The coach can tell something. The coachee tells something about he how he or she uh, um, experienced the coaching. The coach can say something and the observant get two minutes. The others get both one, but the observant get two minutes mm -hmm. to give feedback on right. the coaching. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's yeah. great. So yeah. it's a learning process. Yeah, yeah. excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>